Well, thank you so much, Richard, and thank you all for accepting the martyrdom of the third <laughs> lecture. <laughs> so the, the feedback from yesterday was to have it at even more pa measured pace, which we'll try to accomplish today. And then and that will be the end. <laughs> so what? So so the plan, right? So the plan for today. Maybe I'll write the plan. Well, anyway, somehow the plan for today is uh, we're looking at this x, which is for for today will be union. So it's the Hilbert scheme. The Hilbert scheme of C two points, that is to say it's this joint union over all n with the hilt C2n. Or you can take more general or replace C2 by AM surface or replace the x by Nakajima variety. I think if we understand this example, we he'll get he'll get enough to extrapolate from the general case. And what I would like to show is if I take so there's a two-dimensional torus acting here. I'll do not t. If I take the t current k theory of x, there's an action of a certain quantum group. Which, so, which I'll explain what this thing means of, of G hat, where G in this particular instance is GL1 hat loops into GL1. So this is would be double loop. So this is GL1 with two hats. And then inside here, there will be this while you want while groupoid group or groupoid group. It's really groupoid inside which sits peak x, so lattice, in which case is isomorphic to that, and. And via some you know, somehow you assign certain operators. This is an X here, so the particular X there. So this 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 action of this would be give us the matrices of a certain rem remarkable, if I may say so. And one of the less enough difference equation, Q difference equation. And what's remarkable about this equation are well, several things. One, it's something if if for any reason you ever care about Q difference equation, you'll see right away this one is remarkable. But what's more remarkable, I was trying to 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 uh, to argue through the first two lectures, this lets you determine this equation, lets you determine this curve counts, <coughs> curve counts, in three folds. When you say big x equals z, you mean in this example, I'm just. That's right. That's right. There's some. There's some like, a, in some sense, it's in this all one universally on all of that. Right. So. There's some op some operator that corresponds to all one on each component. <coughs> okay. And so if so, this is this thing here is the subject of. Geometric representation theory: How to make uh, some algebra act on cohomology or K-theory of some variety. And if you, if you ever heard about, so 
so this is, this is, before we begin the actual construction, I want to compare and contrast it with chances are you heard something else, some other point of view. And, and, and the point of view you might have heard is the point of view of, uh, roughly speaking, whole algebras. Point of view. It says <coughs> that if now we have your modular of sheaves, for example, here, you have natural correspondences, like you can have a correspondence between help, help, and then the stack of all torsion sheaves. This is really a stack of them, in the technical sense of the word, torsion sheaves. The correspondence being that you can have an ideal, if you think of the, of the moduli point as an ideal in the ring of polynomial of two variables, you can have one ideal be a, a sub in this, with the quotient being just some. So you have, a, you have this locus of short exact sequences. And then if you have any, so, so any equivalent K theory class on this stack will, re will give you an operator from here to here, right? I mean, how whole algebras work? You have, uh, you have triples, and then you, this is, and then you pull, can pull back anything you want from here. Then you're going to get K theory class on this, and it'll be an operator. Right. There's a so, so. I, I can make a more, a more, um, more technical comparison later. But the, um, but the, uh, the, the things I want to emphasize before we begin, the. The, the, the certain aspect that this construction is lacking is that ahead of time you don't know what to pick from here. You can either pick some very specific, very nice k classes, like for example, you can demand that the length of the scheme be one, yeah. and then and then you get a line bundle on this on this correspondence, or you can take them all, and then it's not clear how to, you know, how to survey this. And second, this gives you an algebra, and it's not a quantum group. And I'll explain, we'll begin. And, and there's a, the, this quantum group aspect of it will be very important to, to constructing this, the wild group. There's no wild group of an algebra. So, so we can, I, I'll cover it. So this is, this is, strictly speaking, not necessary. It's just, it's just to place you, so in case you, Hurts. I mean, uh, like I said, with problem, the 99% probability, if you heard the talk about this stuff, you, you, you heard it from sort of this perspective. And so if I, I want to explain first, what's a quantum group? I don't want to insult your intelligence, but, uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and with, with being encouraged by your words, I'll start with a finite group. So, so finite group. And of course, if we study representations here of a finite group, we might as well replace it by, I, my field's been consistently C, so I just put C again, by the group algebra. Right. This has obviously the same representations here, but it, it it, it forgets some information about the group. Like for example, all abelian groups of the same order will, be, will give isomorphic algebras. It's just, if it's this group abelian, this would be just a direct sum of so many fields. Right? <laughs> <Right>? <coughs> to, to, re to remember the structure of a group, well, for this we have Tanakian formalism. And that is to say, you remember an extra operation in this algebra, namely coproduct. So you, 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 this algebra carries an extra structure, which is it sends G tensor G. So maybe I'll denote this algebra A. This is a homomorphism of algebras from A tends tensor A. This is a homomorphism of algebra. And if you want to remember inverse, there's an antipode, which sends SG to G inverse, 
this is from A to A. This is anti-homomorphism of algebras. And this structure recovered the group completely. Like, for example, the group itself is the set of group-like elements in the algebra. The solution to these equations is exactly the original group. So this together, these operations together with the natural axioms that they satisfy give a structure of a Hopf algebra. And this is this is <coughs> and so and that G is say continue connected Lie group then then the replacement of this story you can as a replacement of this story there are many versions of the group algebra but one which you can take you can take A to be the universal development of its Lie algebra. This is this is one of the many versions of a group algebra. And then this of course I mean, this 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 makes sense whether this is whether this is a you know finite group or not. And just by differentiating these equalities, you find that the natural definition of a coproduct is xi tensor one plus one tensor xi, and the antipode of xi is minus xi for xi in the Lie algebra. And so now we come to the point, what is, what is a quantum group? Quantum group for the purposes of this talk. So in principle, you can take any, any of the other definitions. There are many other hope algebras associated to, say, re, to, to, a Lie, to a Lie group. But, but let's take this one, quantum group equals just a Hopf algebra deformation. Of U G. And to explicitly indicate parameter R, this is H is parameter deformation. H for us will be, in fact, so H, since you ask, H here will be, an, in fact, this will be, in fact, this will be in KT of point, and this is the weight of symplectic form. Form on X. So more traditionally, more traditionally, but people would like like exponential of H. I mean, this is, let's see, you know, when you write weights, it's always the question whether you write the differential, or you use different letters to denote the weight of Lie group or Lie algebra. So for me, this would be a weight of group. So it's, it's sitting here. So it's here in your It's really, you know, this is star. So it's GM. It's in GM, yes. But more traditionally, you think of this as like. Then what Yeah, it's flat. Uh, right, it's a flat uh, Hopf algebra. We'll get, we'll take a, we'll get a particular one. Okay. And the main difference. Oh. What? Um. I think so. I mean, all our varieties are formal, so they're free as modules over kt over point. The key, I don't know. I think it's free. Yeah. I mean, the, the k theories are free. So, and so the main difference. So, since it's such a central subject here, I'd rather have it on the middle board, I even though it wastes time for erasing, than to have it on the sideboard.
So main feature. is that this, the co-product, becomes not, not, well, I'd say non-commutative, means if you tr put it in the opposite order, non-commutative. That is to say, we have a COPE algebra, you can tensor multiply modules, and then, and if you take the tensor product of two modules in one order, then then, then it's generally speaking not isomorphic to the tensor product in the other order. Certainly, at least the permutation of the factor is not an intertwining operator. But it may be actually not isomorphic. And so this is maybe, this is, so algebraic geometry is full of, so to speak, tensor categories. But, but this may be a feature which is not which is not so familiar to, to most of you. So this will be a feature that we will find in our situation. So <laughs> what? Yeah, 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 that's right. So we'll, we'll get that. And so in our case, we will be thinking of UH bar of, not of some Lie algebra, but of one loop, loops into some other Lie algebra. So this is, this is some Lie algebra tensor polynomials in Laurent polynomials in one variable. Central yes, maybe centrally extended, yeah. So important point is that here this thing this thing this, this Lie algebra has an automorphism which just rescales rescales this variable. I'll just denote an element of this group by A. And so given any module whatsoever, you can rotate this by this automorphism, and, and we'll call it V1 of A. Precompose with automorphism. So if you have a module, you can precompose with automorphism. So this automorphism, this persists. This, this persists, deforms. So the deformed one will still have that automorphism. And so then you can, you can, take, you can take V1 V1 of A means precompose with an action of this guy. And you can ask the question whether this one is isomorphic. And the, the feature that, will, that, that exists is that this is isomorphic. This is isomorphic for generic A, so over rational functions in A. So if, if you take to generic A, for generic shifts, there are isomorphic. Means there is a non-trivial non -trivial matrix, which is denoted the R, R matrix, R V1, V2 of A. This is rational matrix, rational. which is the intertwiner. And then, of course, if you're, if you're to make the situation look more symmetric, you can, this is an automorphism. So if we, if we shift the first one by A1 and the second one by A2, and then the same thing here, then there'll be a, a function of its ratio. I mean, shifting everything by the same amount is an automorphism. So, and this. This is a feature of a particular deformation of U G F. Right. So, so no, you can, you can, you can, you can. I think you can abstractly show that, in fact, these deformations will always remain this. Uh, remain this. But I, I, I'm not. I haven't studied this deformation theory question. Since we're going to get, we're going to get particular deformation, for which this particular will be satisfied. And then, and then, and then. But I, perhaps I think there's just no others. Yeah. I think any, any anybody else is isomorphic to it. Look, we're going to get. I'm just. I'm just explaining what we're going to get. 
And we're not going to get it by deformation theory. One can think about the deformation theory. And that's a useful way of thinking. But we're going to get something specific. And then, and, and the point about, the point about this, this R metric is that, is that this will satisfy a certain braid relation. Namely, if I have, if I have three modules now, And I want to compare them with the ones put in the opposite order. I obviously have two ways of doing it. And so I'll have two intertwiner operators. Then on general ground, we'll have to be at least proportional. But in fact, you can normalize this R matrix. You can, I mean, this, of course, is defined up to a multiple. And you can normalize them all so that the, the two intertwining operators you're going to get will be on the nose equal. So there'll be a relation of the kind if I take permute the first and the second. No, but this is uh, say this is uh, this is supposed to be universally for any two modules, right? In particular, you can <laughs> there's if you if you write some universal expression, it's have to be only up to multiple because in particular you can you can you can plug in the reducibles. Yeah, well, it's, it's, there's going to be one universal thing, which in fact is an element in the complete. This sits in, in a certain completion of u h g hat tensor u h g hat. Some completion of that since you're universal. The what? The location of the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then when I say it rational, it means in every representation, since I've, you well, anyway, in every representation, it's a multiple of rational function. So you can, you can normalize it. Uh, you can normalize it so that it satisfies what's known as Young-Boxer equation. Namely, if you permute this in three, in two different ways, you're going to get the equation of the form. is equal the other way around. So I'll just write I'll just write the previous R two three R one three R two. This is now Young Box equation. And it's about as powerful as E equals M C squared. <laughs> and this is uh, this is something. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's got to be. Well, I hope there's no Young Baxter bomb, but uh, yeah, it's a very powerful equation, and we'll see why in a second. Because you see, it's it's uh, is uh, you can you can upend the whole discussion. And reconstruct, one can reconstruct everything. One can, the whole theory. How do you want also that to turn V1 over a tensor product, you can do in two steps? Jumping over to first and then to second? Yes. Yeah, there's, but, you know, well, let's, let's focus on this equation right now. So. <laughs> So, so, uh, so one can reconstruct. So all I'm trying to say. So suppose, conversely, one can the whole the algebra can reconstruct. from a collection of these R matrices over 1, V2. Okay. So there is, there is, so this is, 
So given the algebra, you can study whether, so given this whole thing, you can study whether there is, whether there is this element in this complete and tensor square such that, it, that permutes the two co-multiplication. You can study this question. But you can, you can start from the back door and get straight to the whole point of the this, of this story is that if you give this collection of these matrices satisfying this equation, you can reconstruct the whole thing. Namely, you do, you are, what? Where does it live to be given? So this would be, this would be the algebra will be sitting. So the algebra will be sitting in the, in the, uh, if you want direct sum over all tensor. So you have, you have this collection. So you have, you have a certain collection of modules, vi. And from this, you can take all the tensor products. So maybe I'll call them V. This module, maybe that can both face V. This is a tensor product. Of, of the kind, you know, V1 tensor, V3 tensor, V5 tensor, V4 tensor, V1 again, something like that. Maybe it's enough. And so this will be sitting over all these tensor products in endomorphisms of these. So this will be this will be an algebra that will know how to act in all possible tensor products of this of your of your if you want what we want fundamental representations. This is like fundamental representations, and this is the whole category. And and the way it's reconstructed, it's very simple. First, if you take They're vector spaces with some bunch of operators satisfying the Young-Baxter equation. Yeah. And the way it works is that you take any of your modules vi and tensor it with one of those modules v. Now here, in this, here you have this operator r vi. V, which is just a product, which is extended multiplicatively from R, V, I, whatever the constituents of this constituents of that module here. You can check that if you extend it multiplicatively, it satisfy young Baxter equation. And then what you do, you take matrix elements, then, then of this thing takes matrix elements. in VI. You're going to get a collection of operators, of in fact operator valued functions. Mm -hmm. You can, this, this R matrix dependent on this parameter A, so you maybe shift it by A if you want. I apologize. But exactly. So you see this is, uh, this is exactly this, this guy will tell you exactly that you have something like a loop algebra acting because you, you're going to get an operator which depends on a variable. So you can lecture, this gives you operators, gives the yields operators in V depending on A. And you take the coefficients of those operators. This would be like the, the individual coefficients here acting. And then you see from definitions, you see that this, this, the R matrix is the intertwiner for this. I mean, this, this, this is this, this property, this being an intertwiner for all these guys. You see this, this is for fixed matrix element in here, you get an operator in all possible modules. Right? This, there are two things. First, the, 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 the Young-Baxter equation tells you simultaneously two things. It tells you that the tensor product commute in the way specified by young boxer because in this equation you can read it like this you can read you can read yeah you can sorry maybe in this product you can read the equation like that or i apologize did like that so 
This would be what's it going to be? This would be like an element specified by position by this is called this thing is somehow called auxiliary space. You can say that this is the the operators corresponding the the action of the auxiliary space one and two and three being in this order here by the arm axis two and three are permuted in the opposite order. So that tells you exactly that this these modules, the armatrices are intertwiners for these modules. That's that's one thing. But you can also what you can also do is you can declare one and two to be auxiliary. You mean is that is that everybody got that? Or to some extent? So this this equation tells you A that this this is indeed this is indeed the category for which the, the set with tensor product which for which the set commutativity constraints. Or you can read it differently. You can say that let's do one and two to be let's declare one and two to be auxiliary. Then this says if I multiply the pr the operators in the three space, so this in the three space will be a product of two operators. And it says the permutation of this, I can permute these operators. This tells you the commutation rules between these operators. It says how to place them in the opposite order. Yeah. That makes sense? That makes sense? So given this reconstruction, of course this reconstruction can be, you can, you can do this reconstruction abstractly. You can define, you know, let's say a tensor category with a fiber functor, take, and then, but the concretely what you're doing is this. So, so, so th this is this is yeah. It is important. It's important whether this this will be a rational function. You can expand it, it, it at zero or infinity. It's important to think about this term. But it's 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 uh, let, let's you know let's let let's let's go to something to something else now. So and so then you can phrase if you want a construction of a quantum group acting on on on, on things. It's enough, so so you can say so you can geometrically. So we want a geometric construction. One R metric of of this R matrix operating in K theory of Tx. Tensor K If you get if you get this, we're yeah. we're done. Right. This by oh yeah, this is it's, you, 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 it's, it's beautiful to it's beautiful to reconstruct this thing. You, 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 right, there's some particular coefficient of some particular things give you the actual Lie algebra. Yeah, this is this is uh, so we want this. Say it again. Um, no, no, no. The fact that uh, it's going to be, in fact, symmetry, it's going to get us uh, Lie algebra with invariant non degenerate bilinear form, and by general, on general grounds, you're going to see it. With, with, with invariant? No, well, yeah, I know. Well, 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 let me let me think about it for a second. So, uh, before you had one of these R's yeah. for each pair of right. But now we no, we now want uh, in just specific vector space. It's enough to take one of them. It's declared to be fundamental representation. This will be like a tensor category generated by one object. 
I mean, one representation, then you can take it to reducible. So there are parts of it's your tensor products. So this will this will tell you, right? This will tell. I mean, this you'll get operators on all the spaces. So you get you know things with operators. That will tell you the irreducible. Of course, yeah. This this particular one will be reducible, of course. And if you take tensor products, you know. so so all right. So maybe the first question is what is geometrically. What is geometric? How are we supposed to think of this geometrically? What was that supposed to be? And, and so, just copy it here. And, 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 and one can, so, so the idea, that one of this, so I gave you some universal varieties in which an example was the Hilbert scheme of points, is that that says that x is so to speak tensor product of x1 tensor x2 if there exists a C star action, which is denoted by A the same thing, on x. So x, so this is C star, so maybe I'll write like this. It's a homomorphism to automorphisms of x preserving the symplectic form. All these varieties are symplectic. Such that the fixed locus of this is really the product of x1 x2. And so, example. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so example. So Nakajima variety as associated with the quiver with one dot and no arrows is is what maybe I'll denote maybe I'll denote TGN, which is bad notation, but it saves me a chalk. This is the union over all K. This is similar like the Hilbert scheme I defined to be union over all possible things. And so then uh, then the cotangent bundle of the Grassmannian of k dimensional subspaces in an n dimensional space. It, this 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 thing here, this 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 automorphism group is nothing but GLN. I mean sorry the you know, there's a reductive sub, whatever, but it's a JLN X preserving symplectic form. And inside here, I can take a particular one parameter subgroup, namely I take A N1 times N1 N2 times. What is N? N is something. I mean, Nakajim variety comes with, a, with, a, with an integer. Maybe, maybe. Oh, how about we change this n to m so it's not confused with it? No, so this means a quiver. Vertex, no arrows. Oh, yeah, so then you decorate. So this, the actual quiver is you, you know, you draw two arrows. So, so maybe I'll write like this. So when you saw, so the way, the way it works is that uh, maybe I'll put the root right here. So if you have a quiver here, the actual date of Nakajima quiver is the following. You, for every dot, you write like a brother square. And then, for, and then you put an arrow from the brother square to back and forth. And then every, every loop here, maybe I'll put a loop here. Then this loop you double. And now you write. Now you write uh, numbers, which I'll so. And this for the for, for the dot here, I had this guy. And the numbers here, here you write m, and here you write k. But usually you sum over all whatever associated 
the original things you sum, whatever associated to your kind of anchor things you, you fix. And so then you see, so if you take the fixed locus, TGM, <sighs> fixed locus, well, this is going to be just TGM1 tensor, direct product TGM2. See, to have a direct, we have an actual direct product, it's important to allow disconnected varieties. So otherwise, it's not going to work. Everybody's on top of this computation? <laughs> and so, and so then, if we apply the general procedure, we're going to get nothing but U H bar of G L two hat, which is very close to very close to somehow Nakajima will give you you I mean somehow very close to cut smoothie. There's not so much difference. But the but the but for this quiver, the <laughs> the cut mode is about with zero. So, but so gives you this. yes, this 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 dot and the corresponding collection of the R matrices will make this group act on the K theory of the spaces. This is this is this is essentially due to Nakajim because this thing is I mean this is essentially no difference between this and cut mode. The difference of them is center. But 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 if under two dots the difference is is, is tremendous. Because under two dots it mean once you <laughs> I mean how to say you have a center, you put it under another dot, it ceases to become center. So this is I mean, sorry, in the dot the head. Under two roofs. Under two roofs uh, the difference between GL and SL is is dramatic. You look, you're going to obtain like the, the one from the textbook R matrix. Yeah, so. So now, so, and so now, we would like to say then, then, then in some sense, what do we want? We want, if we want these guys, all this. Oh, yeah, and then example number two is the example we care about. So. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't trust <laughs> How are we going to get to the wild group? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the example we want is the example of, of this quiver, which I already have continuously there. So I have this quiver. So this is the doubling of my A. So this was the quiver A0 hat, and I the actual the actual Nakajima quiver date is something like this. And the Hilbert scheme Hilb N is is when you put one here and N there. So this gives you Hilb C to N. And like I said, over all N we take this joint union. And so, and so, uh, and so I'm going to say that there is an embedding of hill cross hill into the Nakajima variety that corresponds to two here, right? And this embedding goes like this: so if I have an ideal one and an ideal another, I can take the direct sum. Sorry, direct sum, and that's it in this you know, Nakajima variety associated with, with this part being 2 now, which is the moduli space of frame rank 2 torsion free sheets on C2. So these are, this are the frame means they trivialized at infinity. It really shifts on P2 trivialized. So fr frame shift on C2 is a shift on, shift on P2 that's trivialized at, at, uh, along the line at infinity. No, you fix trivialization of this restriction to the line. 
And that, that's what you, f you fix this data. I mean, of course, it's that a four, but the data you fix is fixed trivialization at the so line. You extend the you, you, the, the data is so is is a, so the data as you can say fr torsion free sheaf on P two together with trivialization with restriction to the line at infinity. So that's that's right. And what is and and therefore there is by changing this trivialization there is a GL two act. And if I take my subgroup of the exact same shape. And of course, the fixed law side is going to be direct sums, and and the and the in the rank one, if you're thinking of rank one torsion free, I mean rank one frame sheet has to be an ideal sheet. Because it has to sit in its double dual, it has to be CBO. So, um, so, so now we want 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 an isomorphism. So we want all the spaces, all three spaces in the definition, be modules over some over some quantum group. So we want an isomorphism of K theory of X one. Here. X2. So this is over rational functions in A, over local with local pastoral localization. Right? I mean we want we want to say that this module is a tensor product. That is to say, we want to have some some way to identify it. And then if we but then if we, we could also identify it in the opposite order, that'll be an R matrix. Right? So what we actually construct I apologize if you're taking notes, I'm not saving time here. Is a map this way? Which is then becomes an isomorphism after localization. So this is a map on integral K theories. After pass the localization becomes isomorphism. So that's what very abstractly you can ask for for a map this way. So since, since this is obviously, you know, you can abstractly ask this for A is my, A is my, A, A in the automorphisms X omega torus, torus, and you can, instead of, and, and T's and A contains in T some bigger torus. It's, it's how to say it's unitary. It means if you take the R matrix times the transpose and you inverse A, that it becomes identity. So you get an identity of the form R times R one two R R of A R two one A inverse. This is one. And so and so this this cannot be a map, which is just push forward. And this cannot be a push forward map because this have no way. Of distinguishing between 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 the order, right? What so it means somehow the clue here is that of course if you take this torus, it's the same as same as this torus, and literally the same because the scalars act act. Uh, and so the difference between the two factors will have to come from choosing. Between a goes to zero, a goes to infinity. Right? And so this is this this is where the stable envelopes come in. And this will be a, <laughs> a one minute summary of a of a long book. <laughs> so.
first inkegemaltje. So in, in the reference for this is a book that I wrote with Molik on the subject is, is, um, is that you can construct the following thing. Of course, if you look, you're looking for a correspondence that gives you a map from cohomology of the fixed log to the monetary and the thing. And the natural guess you look for in here, you can look for the correspondence like attracting correspondence. Attracting correspondence formed by pairs x and the fixed point f such that the limit is a acting going to 0, a acting on x equals f. A is some torus right now, which we take here. We take one dimensional, but in generality, you can take an arbitrary torus. So, and, and which one-dimensional torus do we take? The uh, the example still on the board here for oh, the one. Yeah, the this one, that one. Yeah. <laughs> what? T is some bigger torus. I mean, the, the, thing, the thing, well, you can take the centralizer of A, but I took some, you know, like a maximal torus in the centralizer of A. I mean, it cannot be the whole group of automorphism because it won't commute with A. But you can take a maximal torus containing A. It just, uh, it's, uh, it's also a torus. I mean, in general, there's a, in a grand case here, there's no difference between between a group and a maximal torus because a character of a reductive group we know by its restriction to a torus. So there's really no, no loss of information. <laughs> and, so, and so this is, this is, this is inadequate. Inadequate in that this is satisfied, this has all sort of bad features in that it's, uh, uh, if you just, this will give you a certain correspondence between, if you take the closure of this, maybe, Maybe you take the closure of that, so that's really have a correspondence. Then, then this would be this would be a bad idea. Like for example, we'll not solve the Young-Baxter equation. There are matrices constructed this way, and the reason is the attracting, the attracting uh, sets. They're very delicate. They, well, I guess Janusz likes things to be delicate, and like I know, li and I like the things to be robust. I like these things to be, like for example, if you have a family, then the attracting manifolds I'd like to be, to be flat in that family, which will not be the case. So, so, so the solution to that is, is to in fact take a, some improved thing, something called stable envelope, step from stable envelope. It's, a, it's some improved version of this. You can, you can think of this, if you had a perturbation, like what? Well, if you had a perturbation, which in this case you do, in this case there is really a perturbation, you can take the attracting manifold on the perturbation, take its limit back to, to, to this special fiber. And then this, this gives you a map, so this gives you a map. This gives you the sort of map. The current cohomology, XA to XT, and that will satisfy satisfy Young Buster equation and will give you a certain quantum group called the Yangian. But yeah, it's, it's a long story. I can, I can, yeah. Fortunately, those of you uh, who are looking for stuff to watch on YouTube, the Princeton Mathematics Department posted 10 lectures I gave on the subject a while ago at the department. So <laughs> right, anyway, so our goal now is to, things to do the same thing in K-theory. And in K-theory, so in K-theory, A new ingredient, a, a new important ingredient. A new important ingredient. Comes in. 
And um, so you can you can uh, so you, you 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 know there has to be something because you cannot define a K theory class by a limit. I mean, you can define, if you can define a K theory class by a limit, if the group, a current K theory class by a limit, if the group acts trivial on the base of deformation. But, but not in general. <laughs> I mean, otherwise it's still defined. And it's, uh, and so you have to give an extra data. And an extra data here, extra data, is a choice of a fractional line bundle. Pick X, tensor Q. Minus minus central branch of hyperplane. Periodic arrangement of hyperplane. I I have exactly two minutes to finish my sequence of three lectures, so maybe I'll I will not explain how this goes, but I will tell you uh some kind of comparables in the mathematics in the whole, and that the it's in, in many in, in many aspects it's very close to the theory of multiplier ideal sheaf. And the choice of that fractional line bound is like a choice of a fractional divisor. And the choice of these hyperplanes are the, the jumping numbers. Or well, what do you call them? The jumping numbers? Yeah, so this is this is like that. And so you get and so you get an R matrix. So you get two kinds of R matrices. So, so first, the R matrix depends on two things. You have, you get an R matrix. Maybe, all right. The plus minus sub L, where plus or minus refers this part refers. plus minus refers to A plus minus 1 going to 0. And L refers to a choice of, of an alcove in the arrangement which we'll be st we, we, we've been discussing yesterday. So it's some, some arrangement like that. And then you can or maybe stop, maybe I call it stop. First you have this stable envelope. And you can define two things. You can define the R matrix. R at L. This is the this is this is this isomorphism composed with the isomorphism in the other way. So this would be stop say plus L composed with stop minus L inverse. Or you can, if you have a wall separating two things, maybe call it W. And so this were, here was your L. Here's where sitting your L. And there's an L prime sitting here. You can have our wall to be stop uh, stop uh, L plus stop L per what was it prime also plus so maybe I'll add plus inverse like that. And the basic result is that is that if I choose a path that goes from the so this sits this sits in pickaxe tensor Q. So if I choose a path that goes from from minus infinity to plus infinity, means this is this is from minus ample infinity to plus ample infinity, then then this matrix here. will be a product of this wall matrices along this along this path. 
This is, a, this is the analogous thing of this to this in the non-affine situation, the R matrix of, of, of a, like a finite dimensional quantum group admits a factorization that is recorded by factorization of the longest element in the while group. And this is analogous. This choice of longest element in the while group analogous to choosing a path. That it will, this is a path. Right, any path whatsoever that goes from minus sample to the plus sample direction, if you multiply this wall, whatever wall it crosses, if you multiply that out, this will give you the, this thing. So, sorry, I said like this. So I apologize. You have to take, so you go through L. Didn't say it correctly. So this path, for over this thing, you multiply the plus ones. Over this part, you multiply the negative ones. And then, so this. No, it doesn't have to be. It can be. Look, I mean, this is obviously, I mean, this obviously is a representation of some fundamental groupoid. Right? I mean, it can, if it go around the loop, you get one, right? I mean, right? It's obviously, this is the way it's defined. It's obviously satisfies, it's independent of the path. So you don't have to take a minimum. Yeah, exactly, you don't have to, yeah. If you go on, when you get second, it's not No, but it's, look, it's defined to be the product of, if you <laughs> go around closed loop, it's defined to be. What was this thing going to be? It's just a product which is going to come back to itself. <laughs> and so this tells you, if you take then extract the matrix elements, this tells you that for every one of them, if you just say every one of these matrices, you can take these matrix elements of that, and this will give you an embedding of some. This, 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 a wall like this gives you an embedding of u h bar of some g w inside of your u h bar g half. Just because, well, anyway, you can do it. You, you can specifically pick each term here by a smart choice of matrix element. It's an infinite product. And how do you begin? So it's, it's, like I said, it, it is a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a product of two infinite products. And I didn't say this, this very clearly. You can, you can look in the paper if you want. So it's, a, so, 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 this is a, this is going to be a product of two infinite products, each of which converges. And it's a product of like one kind of R matrix is going one way, and then another kind of R matrix is going another way. And they converge. Converge as whatever, analytical or formal series, they converge in any way. Yeah. So I'm just saying by choice, this is defined, the, this thing is defined as matrix element of this God. But you can, in fact, using this factorization, you can pick out matrix elements of each factor. And therefore, this gives you a map from here to here. So this 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 one this sort of one wall somewhere just separates. It's not a, it's not correspond to a line. It correspond to really yeah, wall. Yeah, no, no, but the, the thing is embedding it. Yeah. You can. Or, or it's so it's associated. It's associated to this data. I mean, it just says this particular guy. This 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 thing here. It's some some R matrix. Its matrix coefficient will define you this. Yeah, will be some algebra. But, but, but using this factorization, you prove that this algebra is a subalgebra in here. Yeah, but my question is, what is the right hand side? Well, this corresponds, this, this are the matrix elements of this. this is, it doesn't matter which hill you pick. I and mean, this is going to be the same matrix elements. Even if it in a different code. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be the same, yeah. Like, like, wait a minute, one, one example I gave you is UQ of GL2 hat, right? This, did, this didn't expand on anything, it didn't, didn't depend on L. The, what will depend on L is a choice of, a, is an algebra is going to be the same, as a Hopf algebra, it'll be, it'll be, you know, the Hopf structure will be twisted. It will be twisted precisely by this guy. I'm not so doing so well on time. And so I'll, I'll give you the, somehow, so. So, 
more steps. So whatever this thing is, whatever this thing is, is this is sum, this is this is a rank one, rank one quantum group. <laughs> has one root after proportionality, namely that wall. And and the situation for a fine for so in particular for quivers of finite type, I only get to the CSL two. For a quiver of a fine or 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 finite type, we're going to see SL2 or GL1 hat. And for wild quiver, it's going to you know, be more. But right now, this is enough for us. And so first, so you know, step, I don't know, whatever, 10, 105, fifth step. <laughs> there were many steps before. I don't know. I just <laughs> making so much. So you associate to any abstracted, to any quantum group whatsoever. So to any quantum group, any rank, any quantum group of rank one, you associate abstractly some element B W. In fact, depends on Z. Z is Z is an element, and so to speak, I mean. Z is again an element in like complexification of the Cartan of uh, quantum group U G H by G W. This is in this is an element in if you want like Cartan tensors I mean, uh, complex Cartan or maybe something like that and show. Show this form form um, satisfy relations. This of our wild group void, namely that if I cross several walls, it doesn't depend on the path. Right now, I'm overcrossing all this. Means the, the independent. If you cross several of them, then here, of course, this that this multiplied to one, it's obvious. But that those guys multiply to one, it may not entirely obvious. And 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 for SL two, for SL two, one recovers the uh, dynamical. Quantum <coughs> wild group of anything of Rovashenka. In general, it becomes some sort of wild group or wild group void. And then from there, I told you the rest. You take the lattice there. So if I have, if I have a you have to now pick a specific alcove. The alcove has to be minus sample alcove. Whatever the alcove that at zero is minus sample. And if you want to multiply, if you want, to if you want this, this sort of you know operator that corresponds to to uh, to a sample class, you go negative that sample class. There's some walls you cross. You multiply them out, and that's your difference equation. And how this is proven, yeah, this will never be explained. So, so maybe in conclusion, I'm already 10 minutes over time, maybe 11 minutes. I want to say a word for in, in, in defense of the difference equations you get, whether or not you're interested in, in, in numerous of geometry. And that those are really cool difference equations. They're, they generalize, they're just as, my, my statements are just as beautiful as Q difference equations in, in very technical sense of the world. Like, for example, they're not rigid, but for example, you can, you can do their monodrome. You can, you can do many marvelous things with them. And so 
And so if anybody's looking for a cool differ difference equations to study, there is one associated to every Nakajima variety. And uh, yeah, well. Well, thank you so much for, for bearing with me. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.